Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Dukakis Online. I'm your host, David Wisner, Professor of International Relations at ACT, the American College of Thessaloniki, and Executive Director of the Michael and Kitty Dukakis Center for Public and Humanitarian Service. Uh, we're here with two very special guests on a rather important and special occasion for us. We'll be talking about the posthumous uh, publication of Gifted Greek, The Enigma of Andreas Papandreou by the late Monteagle Stearns, uh, U.S. Ambassador to Greece, 1981 to 1985. We're joined by uh, Monteagle's uh, uh, widow, uh, Antonia uh, Stearns, we call her Tony, and the translator now of a couple of Monteagle's books, Lenny Odoni, who's joining us uh, from, I think, an island somewhere in Greece. So uh, as I've said, this is a rather important occasion for us at the Dukaki Center. We hosted the Stearns in 2004 uh, on a rather special occasion for us at the Dukaki Center. It was the fifth anniversary of the, uh, of the Dukaki Center. And it was the first opportunity we had to hear from the horse's mouth, so to speak, from Ambassador Stearns, uh, the project that he had been uh, thinking about for quite some time, to write a book about his longtime acquaintance, uh, the former uh, Prime Minister of Greece, Andreas Papandreou. So I'd like to welcome uh, my guests uh, this evening, uh, Tony and Lenny. Uh, thank you for joining me. This is a podcast, so we're pre-recording uh, the broadcast, and we will uh, upload the video and premiere it on the YouTube channel of the Dukaki Center uh, later this spring. Uh, let's start just a little bit with the background to the book, if you will. Uh, Tony, uh, you were involved in the writing, I suppose. Uh, you, you were with, uh, with uh, Montegal in Athens in the early 1980s. And a lot of the experience that he, he discusses in the book is a joint experience. Uh, what did it mean to you to uh, see the uh, book to publication? It meant a lot because Monty worked on it for a long time, too long. And he was ill at the end of his life and he was blind. And he had had this off and on writing. And then when he couldn't see anymore, he dictated. And I was very much a part of this whole um, labor uh, for a long time, but more so in the last months of his life when he couldn't see and he was bedridden and I was typing. I can't say that I helped write the book. I helped edit the book. I helped put it in order because he could not read his own writing and I was the one who was his harshest critic telling him when he was saying things twice, going on longer than he perhaps ought to, and in the end, as I wrote in the preface or forward, I think it's called, um, I said that after he died, it was not so much a question of rewriting as rearranging. Okay. And that's what I think I helped with the most. Okay. It took me a long time. Um, I didn't do anything for about six months. And then suddenly Monty's muse appeared and I worked all throughout 2017 and 2018. And then I spent 2019 trying to find a publisher, which is Potomac Books, an offshoot of the University of Nebraska Press. And it was hard enough getting to that point, then the next year was even worse because it's a do-it-yourself business. 
these days. And my contract called for me to take care of everything and for, and for the publisher to only send me emails telling me I had to do it by yesterday. So it was a very frustrating job so that when I actually saw the book in print, I just couldn't believe it. And now it's 2021, the book has been out for about six months and Eleni is translating it or has translated it into oh, yeah. Greek. Lewis Greek, I'm sure. And it is now going through the same process of editing, revising, getting everything right at um, a Greek press called Estia. Eleni can tell you more about that because the book is now out of my hands and into hers. Okay. Let, let me interject before we turn to uh, Eleni Odoni. I think. Uh, Monteagle published one of his previous books with Potomac Press, so they they are aware of his uh, contribution previously. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, no, no. Okay. Monty published his first book under the aegis of the Council on Foreign Relations, okay. and his second book was published by the twentieth. Century Fund, as it was then called. I think it's now called the Century Fund since we're in the 21st. Um, but no, what had happened though was that Eleni translated his first book right. on Greece, Turkey, and Cyprus. Okay. Uh, so uh, let, let us then, uh, ah, you have a copy of it here. Okay, uh, yeah. Lenny. Now, uh, what what is the difference between the the book uh, about which we're uh, talking this evening, Gifted Greek, and uh, the other uh, publication, the other book that you translated uh, by uh, Montegle Stearns? Was there any significant difference in the way you had to approach the text as you prepared the translation? Absolutely. Uh, Monte was an ingenious writer. He had written this book and he had, for some reason, contacted Topon Diki in Greece to publish it. Mm -hmm. He asked me to look at the translation that was going on and it was terrible. So I told him, <laughs> look, don't do that to yourself. And uh, he somehow recruited the foreign, the, the, the committee on the foreign relations, and they employed me to do a different translation, the Council on Foreign Relations. And of course, uh, Podiki grabbed on that, and they used my translation, but they had already paid the Greek translator. And so the book came out with a different translate, which was which was really shabby, totally shabby. Anyway, uh, it doesn't matter. It went very well. Monty was very happy with it. it the book did well. It was Periplokes uh, Imachies, you know, Entangled Allies. I, I invented the title because in English, Entangled allies, you have to change all kinds of uh, of, of gerunds, yeah. and it, it didn't mm -hmm. work well. But the book sold very well, and 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 Monty was very happy about it. Now, the book about Andreas of Andreu is a very personal thing, a very yes. personal thing, and that's the difference from anything that is written about Andreas of Andreu. And we must we must admit that a lot of books have been written about Andreas, you know. Right. But this is a personal thing which which looks at a person versus a politician. And that's that's the that's the crux of the book. Okay. And I think that uh, Monty caught the difference because he knew him as a person as a neighbor as a as a as a scientist in the united states and then 
as a fiery fighting politician who came into the Greek uh, political scene as an extremely, extremely, what can I say, an extreme person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, but that that caught the imagination of a lot of people. And and yes. The, on the, the other hand. Yeah. On the you other hand, say the, the 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 issue of uh, uh, Monteagle's acquaintance, shall we say, uh, with Andreas Papandreou uh, was a minor issue, I think, in 1981 uh, when he was preparing yeah. for confirmation in the Senate. Perhaps you remember that also, Tony. Uh, it wasn't oh, yeah. a mainstream view, but there were some people who were probably looking for ways to uh to torpedo his candidacy and uh, one of the ways that he's uh he seems to be close with this firebrand socialist yes. who's anti-american yeah yeah yes you i'm sure mm -hmm. and lenny do you want to answer or david do you no, want no, no. to i think it's it's your question to comment I on it. Your question. well i no. should say that in early 1981 the reagan um, government had just come in and it was morning in uh, America and it was conservative and we were going to be number one in the world and here was Papandreou still head of the opposition party uh, he wouldn't be elected prime minister until October of 1981 and when Monty was chosen to be ambassador in Athens, and this was our third tour there, we had spent a total of seven or eight years there prior to it. First, when he was a junior officer in the late 1950s until 1963. And then again, right after the fall of the junta, when he was the DCM number one secretary yeah deputy yeah. chief of mission what's it called in Greek epitetramenos um epitetramenos right yeah. right and, and, and so in 1974 we went back for a second tour which we just thought was wonderful mm -hmm. never dreaming that we would get a third tour which really made Athens our Zefteri Patrida at that Patrida. point. Yes, didn't, I hope that's what I said. I have gauze in my mouth. And um, so anyway, Washington was a little bit leery because Marty knew Greece and he knew Andreas and it was well known that we had been very good friends in the 1950s and 60s yeah. and they thought that Marty might be a case of localitis which is that <laughs> that <laughs> that you're you know leaning much too far on the side of the host country i think it was a ship owner who went to al haig who was then <laughs> secretary of state and told him, watch out for this guy, Stearns. But at any rate, everything <laughs> went quite smoothly in the end. Yeah, I'll interject here. I'm showing on the screen an oral history that uh, Ambassador Stearns did yeah. with one of his Foreign Service uh, colleagues uh, in 2013, uh, uh, and in which all of these anecdotes are uh, laid out with uh, great uh, detail and clarity <laughs> and uh, and that's one of the reasons i ask you if anyone in the audience is interested in knowing a little bit more about the diplomatic career of montego stearns this is the first source i would recommend that you consult uh, i want to say also you uh, if i'm not mistaken uh, uh, tony you had been in greece uh, before and uh, for the simple reason i think that your father was the uh, U.S. ambassador to Greece at some point in time yes. during the, the Eisenhower administration? Yes, Riddleberger, 
was his name, and he, and he was there rather briefly. Um, he had spent many years in Belgrade, and then he was moved down the road to Greece, a country he didn't know, but was quite interested in, but was only there a little over a year because mm. he was yanked out to go home to Washington to run the aid. Uh, I think it was called ECA at that time, the Economic Cooperation Administration, the successor to the Marshall Plan. And he was mm. frustrated. Meanwhile, I had just come out for a visit. <laughs> I, was, I was out of college. I had a gopher job that I hated. And my parents said, why don't you come out? It's very pleasant here. And so I really went to Greece just to water ski. Uh, <laughs> but I then met Monty as I was lolling around. And um, I remember that my father came home and said, I have just met the most brilliant officer and his name is Monty Stearns. And I looked him up and I saw that he was single. So <laughs> the rest is history. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. And so I mean, I'm wondering if he courted you a little bit like Andreas courted uh, Christina, his first wife. But we'll leave that. That's another story. Another book. Another book. OK. Uh, another Eleni, book, uh, right. perhaps you have something <laughs> to interject about the story. And while you're doing so, I'll show the, uh, the screen of your credentials here, uh, because you are uh, not merely a translator. Uh, you call yourself a political historian and artist. You're a musician. You translated uh, uh, nonfiction. You translated poetry. You worked on the most extraordinary range of historical issues. You've had an affiliation with the Center for European Studies at Harvard University. It's really quite an honor for us to host you here at our event. But you know, what what can you uh, add to the story? of uh, maybe Montego Stern's U.S. ambassador to Greece and his relationship with Andreas Papandreou. I am really privileged to be here on behalf of Monty Stern's. He was a dear friend. I met him, if I may say so, in 19, something in the middle 80s, at the Late Museum 80s. of Fine Arts. Late uh, middle 80s. 80s. Late, Late 80s. We didn't move Late. up here until 89. Right. Late 80s at the Museum of Fine Arts. Mm. I was the chairman of the Greek study book, uh, study group at uh, Harvard, the, the Center for European Studies. And I said to myself, I have to have this ambassador who saved Greece, who saved <laughs> Andreas Papandreou from all his nonsense, <laughs> all the nonsense he was, ah, he was really blurting out on Jaruzelski, on, on Gaddafi, on all of that. And he saved. Monty was so brilliant and so contained and so, so cool. And, collected about anything he said. He was a wonderful man. So I said to myself, I saw him across the room at the MFA, the Museum of Fine Arts, and I said to myself, yes, I have to invite him to my group because I was, that was my job. It was an unpaid job at Harvard, if you can believe it. Um, for 30 years, I did that. So I was the chairman of the Greek study group and I invited him to make a speech about something, I don't remember what it was. So what does Monty do? He just pulls out an envelope out of his pocket with three words in it. And he starts talking for an hour. He was just so wonderful. He was so brilliant. He was so fluent. Ah, Tony's waving at me. Yes, yes, he was a brilliant man. 
And that's how we met. This was the late 80s. He was also, it was just after he had been teaching at Simmons College. Yeah. And after that, he was at every Greek event willing to participate and you know, support Greece, which was he's he's the ultimate, he was he's he's he was the ultimate Philhellen. The ultimate Philhellen. He loved Greece. And and then it was something very moving to me because I'm not very you know, I left Greece when I was 18 years old and I saw all the faults and all the the problems, but but he was just a wonderful man. And then all of a sudden, in the 1990, 1990, probably 1990, he calls me up on one day and he says, I have this book ready. Uh, would you, would you uh, look at the translation? I said, of course, Monty. And I looked at the translation, it was really bad. It was a high school translation with Pondik. And uh, I said, you know, if I were you, I wouldn't publish this book because it's going to ruin you. Uh, he said, okay, I'll look what I can do. And so he contacted the, the Council on Foreign Relations and they paid me for a new translation. Unfortunately, it came out under the man whom Pondiki had paid to do the translation. Too bad, that's all right. Right. Uh, uh, terrible, but this book was very successful and Monty was very happy with it. So I'm not going to, to argue with that. Andreas, however, was a man he, he knew since his earlier days. And that was a fascinating thing to him. I don't think there are other books about Andreas Papandreou and the way Monty knew him. I think it was a very, I think it was a very different time. And uh, yes, that's the book in English. Mm -hmm. um, the one I have, if you want to see it, is Periploque Simachies. I, I invented the title because in English it doesn't work, you know, Entangled Allies. Uh, so I think that uh, Andreas, was a dual personality, a Janus personality, mm -hmm. and and that's what comes through the book, the gifted Greek, which now has a different title in Greek. Uh, it, it's called Andreas Papandreou, the Enigma. Okay, ah. because okay. everybody knows that he was gifted Greek here. Right. However, I think that uh, who's Andreas Papandreou? I think that that that. That, that, that as a politician, he was a very controversial person, very controversial. He did some very good things that, that the Greeks, you know, the Greeks are toxic. The Greek political scene, as a political scientist, if I may speak, is a very toxic, toxic environment. It still is. The, the idea of an opposition is mm -hmm. to just pick up a mount a, a molehill and make a mountain out of it i mean that's how politics works in greece and i think i think, think it's probably only greek no i don't, I think, don't think it's only greek, only greek. no probably greek not history. but mm -hmm. i agree with you i agree with you it's probably not only greek but here it's it's just disgusting to me i mean you know we've had the covid situation and and it's been going rather impressively, even though we have a lot, a lot of victims. However, uh, somebody has to say, you know, something. I mean, for God's sake, this is a pandemic. And, and, and the opposition, all they do is just pick on this and pick on that and pick on that and call for elections, just terrible thing. I think that Andreas went into that thinking, that he could fight it all and, and, and be fiery and be really, really stringent on everything that, that, that came through his head. Yeah. And I think Monty brings that out in the book very much. Okay. I think he does. Uh, I wanted to, I wanted to think of something that Tony, uh, Tony, uh, uh, 
put forth a, a brief moment ago that uh, she's in a, a dynastic uh, family uh, of uh, American diplomats. Uh, 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 and, uh, and Andreas, uh, Papa Andreu is uh, one of a, a dynasty of Greek politicians. It seems uh, this is also a phenomenon that might characterize modern Greek politics, uh, certainly in the 20th yeah. century. But you know there yeah. is this really difficult relationship between Andreas Papandreou and his father, and uh, I thought that that was something that uh, Monty understood, uh, and and just he nailed it. He put his you know finger right on the tip of the nail, and he and he understood it. But let's see what about the other dimensions of the of the personal life of Andreas Papandreou. What else has struck you as you were? thinking about a Tony or a Lenny. I mean, you know, what if we were to say there's uh, one book on this aspect of uh, Andreas Papandreou, and it's the book by Monty Sterns, what does he really get right there? You want a Lenny or me? Uh, Tony, what is your thought first? Because you were acquainted also with Andreas Papandreou. What Pop did Andreo Monty first. get right? Yeah. I think what Monty got right was that he knew he knew Andreas first as an American and then as a Greek. And actually, yeah. we didn't know that much about his uh, youth when we first met in 1959. Mm -hmm. When Andreas came back to Greece, he was chairman of the economics department at the University of Berkeley at the University of California, Berkeley. Yeah. And he came as a neutral outsider studying the problems of the Greek economy and how to improve them. Mm -hmm. And I think it it was then that that we had our most intimate relationship because he was still a Californian. Okay. He had a wife who was from the Midwest. He had four kids. Mm -hmm. this None was of Margaret. us spoke Greek. Um, yeah. The children I, yeah. were actually young still, I think eight, six, four, and two. I used to babysit them to think <laughs> that I babysat George Papandreou, who was later <laughs> prime minister himself of Greece. But anyway, um, I think it was this candor and this way of unloading and venting with Monty and me in the late 50s and into 1963 sort of off and on because he had left to go home again in 1960 after one year and then he came back twice and um we had left at the end of 1962 but monty was from california and so we saw them several times on our home leaves and once again it was this totally candid way of talking about Greece's problems as two Californians. And I think that that gave Monty, or it gave Andreas, a kind of comfort and ease that was never lost. Okay. You know, it, 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 should, be, for 30 years. it should be said that uh, Monty, uh, in his generation was a bit of an outsider in the sense that he wasn't east coast uh, educated he you know i think he was the californian in the foreign service right uh, or do i misunderstand his background well he was half east coast and half west a little bit because he was born in cambridge yeah. <laughs> he was born in cambridge yeah but he also was an only child his parents divorced she moved west because she came from um, Palo Alto and Monty went to Stanford and all of that. But then he came east and went to Columbia. So he was really a split personality himself when it came Ooh. to his mores. 
No. Very bad. Monkey so. could be West Coast and he could be very East Coast. Okay. East Coast. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it's what? just something I learned that somehow with Monteagle, you know, my family and generations back in his family were somehow connected yeah. because they came from England on right. the ship in 1630. And if that isn't a happenstance, that's quite extraordinary. I'm sorry, I didn't really yeah. understand that when he came and visited <laughs> some years ago. Uh, you know- uh, On the Arbella, we, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. We hosted a, a webinar before the letter in uh, 2011 uh, with Monteagle uh, live from Harvard University and a very distinguished Greek uh, diplomat, uh, Pavlos Apostolidis. And uh, we were talking about Greek negotiating behavior. And we, uh, we asked uh, Monteagle to reflect a little bit on his experience. And I was sitting next to Pablo Apostolidis, Ambassador Apostolidis, and he was nodding and he was in, he was in awe and wonderment that uh, Amantigal was so uh, able to characterize the essence of uh, Greek uh, politicians and Greek diplomats. And now, uh, maybe Eleni, because you have this rather extraordinary uh, situation, you're a Hellene yourself, You've lived abroad for a number of years. You know, do you get a sense reading Monteagle's texts that this is really what he what he's all about? That he's really able to capture these uh, these aspects of the Greek character in a, in a few pages. Is that your experience? I'm kind of curious what you get out of reading his texts as you're preparing uh, to Absolutely. translate. Absolutely, I finished the translation two months and a half ago and we're in the process of correcting it you know correcting and editing uh i am up to it but uh, i don't get all the texts all the time monty was extraordinary in in not only in in, in what he wrote not only in his total uh, absolute uh, understanding and, and 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 really deep 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 measuring of what Greece was all about. I mean, this was marvelous with him. And I, I, I appreciated it very much because, you know, there are very few people who can understand and not, I mean, criticize, but criticize correctly and understand that. The Greeks have no sense of humor, and that's a terrible thing. Uh, they, they, they satirize people, they are sardonic about things, but Monty was never that. He was always perceptive and, and he understood everything about Greece. And so he was a marvelous con interlocutor, marvelous. Mm -hmm. And so I, when he asked me, I think in his last years, that if I ever publish this book, will you translate it? I said, of course, Monty. I made this promise to him, and that's exactly why I did it. Oh. And I enjoyed this book so much. I enjoyed translating it very much because, you know, aside from Monty, I knew all the characters in the book. They were friends of mine. Mm -hmm. Michael McCarthy's was my friend and neighbor in Belmont, Massachusetts. I knew him very well. And his wife and I were very close friends. We were both teaching at Bridges College. Then, uh, Sifneos, I didn't know, but Roy Macridis, who is mentioned in the book, was my professor at Brandeis when I was an undergraduate. Okay. So, I mean, mm -hmm. it, it's, 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 it's a book that connects everything in my history. And of course, when Monty said, you know, you have to do this for me because you translated the previous book, I said, of course, Monty, I will do it. And there was no reason why I wouldn't do it. I <laughs> just, <laughs> it was there. It was there. Okay, oh, let's, uh, yeah. let's, uh, let's shift gears a little bit and say, uh, now, what about, uh, we, we know Monteagle and we know about Greek uh, politics and Greek history, so we're initiated in a sense. Uh, but to what degree yeah. is the non-initiated reader going to appreciate the sorts of things that we're talking about here? Or what do you think, what is the readership of the book going to be, uh, Tony? And uh, 
how are perhaps some of his foreign service colleagues, the younger uh, people who came up while he was still ambassador? What, what do you think? What is the readership going to be in the United States and Greece of this fabulous book? Well, I think that there is the usual group of people interested in international affairs and particularly Greek, um, Mediterranean, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. But I but I could add that um, I've had a um, student lodger here for the past month, Brazilian. He's a cellist, and he plays the cello 18 hours a day. And he doesn't, <laughs> he has no other interests. And he picked up a copy of Monty's book, which I still have three left to uh, hand out. Well, we have and he our came story. downstairs and he came downstairs and he said, this is really interesting. <laughs> and I thought if a Brazilian 22 year old <laughs> cellist likes, <laughs> likes the first few chapters, I then wrote in it to him and being 22, I think he has left now. And I think that he accidentally left the book upstairs. <laughs> but, you know, it doesn't matter. I was so happy to have him drawn into it. Mm -hmm. And I think that is because Monty starts with Andreas as a teenager yeah. during the difficult. Yeah. 1930s going and to Athens how college he and then uh, went to Athens college to the United it, States with $14 in his pocket some with like, $14 like spending it all but, on yeah but he but he you know wasn't an immigrant Andreas was an exile no. and there's a no. big difference there's a big difference he was well educated he came from a prominent family um and he you know wasn't like the usual story of right. the poor rural greek who yeah. also comes right. with only 14 dollars and yeah. ends up sending yeah. his children to harvard um yeah. <laughs> andreas went to harvard because he was very well schooled and ready for it yeah. at any rate i do hope that it will get some notice which is hard to do because of the lockdown here for the past year yeah. it had yeah. been scheduled and i was going to say my piece at the greek consulate here at the embassy in washington there were places yeah. in new york philadelphia and all of that stuff that i was going to schlep around to um and all of it has had to be cancelled so yeah. there has been a kind of loss of time yeah. and um shelf life is very short uh i have no inkling but i'm so happy that we have you david and that i am going to do other webinars they're called right. Right. new to me but obviously helpful and certainly in greece i think that it will sell very well both in english and in greek okay so we'll turn to eleni but i do want to say one thing that's always struck me about monteagle from his uh, biography that he was an english major and he if was that an didn't english major. help him in his career as a diplomat i don't know what what would have because he was a master with language was he not yeah yeah he was so lenny you know we are going to uh save this uh the recording of this particular uh exchange but uh the same question applies to you a little bit you're 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 thinking about monteagle as a writer and you're translating his works i mean something beyond the fact that you know him well uh, what else are we going to see on the Greek market? Are people going to, to flock to the bookstores and pick up a copy, either of the, the book in English or in your Greek translation? What, what do you see as the readership of, uh, of gifted Greek? 
I see both. I see both. Uh, I know people who, who are, I mean, I know at least ex-former ambassadors who are always interested in what Monty would have to say. Uh, but I think that uh, in general, the, 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 the politics of Andreas have always been interesting. And now this is a very personal point of view. Mm -hmm. And so it should work very well. We have a new title in Greek. We don't have, we don't use the gifted Greek. That's what the Evacaretidi at Estia decided to drop that because everybody knew that he was a gifted Greek. So we're calling it Andreas Papandreou, the Enigma. You know, the okay. Enigma. He was a dual personality. And so it's, it's very important that the, the, the editor decides on a new title. That's fine with me. Monty wrote a book that was very important not just about andreas and his relationship which is very personal mm -hmm. but a fathoming of of the greek politics which is truly toxic at times mm -hmm. and it's important to see how how monty saw this I think it was very important to see how Monty saw this. And, uh, and it's a different angle of looking at Greek politics. You know, that's how I feel about it. Of course, I was very privileged to know him for some 40 years and, and to be his friend. And, and uh, I would never have, I would never have rejected the idea of translating the book because he made me promise I would. Of course I did. <laughs> well, now what about the title? And because that was really my last question, Enigma, yeah. the subtitle in English, I think is a yeah. double entendre a little bit. And I'm not yeah. certain whether you captured no, it isn't. that. It... Yeah, because you're no, saying, uh... what, what does it mean to say there's an enigma of Andreas Papandreou? Is it that he is the enigma or the enigma yeah. is the, the, the attempt that we have to make personally to try to make sense of this guy? Well, this was the title that Eva Karaiti, the, the uh, editor of Estia, decided mm -hmm. we should do. Okay. And I don't object to it because, as I say, to, to say gifted Greek, we all knew that he was a gifted Greek. To, for a book in Greece, it doesn't make much sense. Okay. Uh, no, and I so, said, um, yes, but Tony. Yeah, Tony. No, Tony. I had only wanted to say, Monty used gifted Greek as a kind of irony because of the old phrase, "Beware oh. of Greeks bearing of gifts." Of Greeks bearing gifts. And yeah. he, yeah. and I think that may be too clever by half, but anyway, um, that mm -hmm. is why. He called him that. Um, Absolutely. And, but he had Absolutely, actually Eva... started out with a title that was so boring. Uh, <laughs> you know, the history of Andreas Papandreou in both Greece yeah. and America. Uh, okay, so maybe, maybe we'll and... cut that from the recording there. <laughs> the first title <laughs> was a non starter, right? <laughs> it was yeah, just no, to get it focused. Mm -hmm. Tony, the English title is much better, but Eva said, you know, we all knew he was a gifted no, Greek. No, I know? can and, understand. And, and no. she, mm -hmm. she's, uh, she has to make the decisions of the, of the of editing and, and of the publication. So of she course. said, we'll do Andreas Papandreou, the Enigma. The Enigma. Right? No, I think it yes. is absolutely fine. You have to make it catchy. You have to make it catchy. Yeah. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. the, you, you have no idea how many books about Andreas are on the market here in Greece. Oh. Too many. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Too many. So we have to, to do something about that. It's well, just too many books around. Well, this one is a slender book. And therefore, it won't strain readers because no, it is no. a memoir it is a memoir i know as much as it is a character study and yeah. he only wrote about the times that we and the papandreos were all in or at 
the same place. And therefore right. there are gaps mm -hmm. uh, and it ends with our leaving Greece and then the occasional right. visits we had right. afterwards. But there is hardly anything on the second and third terms of yeah. um, his prime, what? His prime ministership. And so because of that, what I slipped into the introduction and the epilogue yeah. were Monty's comments okay. on, on how on how Greek politics went from right. 86 to 96. Um, 90. When right. um, Papandreou died, died and had actually yeah. left office in yeah. a year or two prior to that. Yeah. And I just thought I cannot create chapters on periods that Monty had certainly talked to me with, but he had not written anything. And therefore I thought I'm not going to try to fill that hole except by reference. Okay. You did such a wonderful at job. At the start Tony. and at the end. I, I can just tell you, you it's did thank such you. a wonderful I think job. that I too, who have been writing for, mm -hmm. for a long time, um, and I think it always helps to have an outsider, even a critical wife, look at a husband's <laughs> writing. And just as I have to get others to also absolutely look at mine. Oh, it was it's a great job, a great job. It's it's so co collected, so connected. The whole thing is is whole. Well, that's okay? what it's I was aiming that. for. That's what it's I was whole, aiming for. It just up. To, it, it's a hole. Yeah. Thank you. you because well. that's what wonderful. I was aiming for. And I hope yeah. that others will also find that even though there are gaps, I'm sure that it is no. cohesive. It is cohesive because it's done from a different perspective. And that perspective is very clear. It's the first person as opposed to the yes. narrator, the omniscient Absolutely narrator. wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Well, I- Let's am, hope it goes uh, well. Let me say, I'm extremely proud to say we have ordered a copy for the Bissell Library at ACT, the American College of Thessaloniki. And this is among the first uh, volumes Oh. In a collection we're calling the Dukakis collection. Well, so yeah. the book has a proud place in our library. I will order a copy I... of the Greek translation for the library at the high school, which, uh, which I has hope mostly... it comes out in a month. Yes, and I, I hope it comes as, out in a month. As soon as it's that ordered, would be lovely. Mm -hmm. with Estia, and we put a we put an order in for one copy for our library and you'll have young people reading it and maybe aspiring to a career in public service of some sort. This has but been a lovely, okay. lovely exchange. It's sort of uh, uh, an embodiment of what we tried to uh, accomplish at the Dukakis Center, which is really to promote a friendship between the United States and Greece, between the citizens of those two countries. And, uh, and you have really been quite wonderful to appear with me on this program uh, this afternoon. Thank you once again. The, the book which we've shown you uh, several times throughout the conversation in English is entitled Gifted Greek, The Enigma of Andreas Papandreou. And now thanks to Tony Stearns and Lene Odoni, uh, we know what, uh, what Mondegle had in mind when he came up with this title. It wasn't his first choice, but it was the happy choice. Uh, it's available. There are uh, copies of the English uh, book available at bookstores, select bookstores downtown Thessaloniki. That's how we procure, procured a copy uh -huh. uh, so quickly. 
And I'm certain with Estia that you'll find it on the bookshelf and very, very quickly as soon as it's actually been brought out. Uh, that said, I'm going to thank once again, Tony Stearns and Lenny Odoni, and we will see you soon. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much for, for having wonderful. us.